We always celebrate amazing clothing, footwear, and design on this channel, but what doesn't get enough love is all the little tools that help make our outfits look so damn good. Let's show them some love, shall we? Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome back. Today we are talking about my favorite essentials that I just can't live. I just can't live without. And we're going for budget options, so I don't want to see any complaining now. These are eight of my favorite slash most used tools that I think you should consider. And for under 25 quid, what more do you want? Don't say I don't give you value for money here. As always with me, everything will be linked in the description down below. So if anything tickles your fancy, go have a look down there. And make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Let's begin. Are we? Now, if you spent any time around my channel, you will understand that I love my knitwear. This little tool here is a fabric shaver and it will remove any pilling, otherwise known as those little fabric balls that appear on the surface of your knitwear. Pilling builds up because of friction applied to the garment. The friction between the two fabrics pulls on the shorter wool threads and then they form into balls on the surface. And it might not look like much, but this little thing goes super hard. You can honestly flex. <laughs> Frankenstein some stuff back to life. But fair warning here, and I never see this mentioned in any videos about fabric shavers. If you fabric shave your garment, you are lowering the GSM of whatever you are fabric shaving. I definitely wouldn't go and blast my knits every time I wear them. I typically do it right at the beginning of autumn when I get my knits out of storage or if they get really bad during the winter. And these are strictly for removing pilling. I don't want to see any comments. Oh, Ryan, I accidentally fabric shaved my Favorite R Legacy mohair cardigan, and now it's ruined. You didn't tell me to it. If it's brushed or hairy by design, then just leave it alone. It's meant to be like that. Don't use one of these on it. If you are someone though who loves their knitwear like me, and you want to revive some from the dead for 15 quid, might as well give it a try. Next tool I want to highlight are some chunky, thick hangs. And like a few other things in life, I can't really mention them right now. The thicker, the better. I never ever, and I mean ever, want to see you hanging your clothes on those tiny, spangly little ones that look like a piece of spaghetti just spun into a hanger. Not molto bene. You are killing your clothes putting them on things like that. And I hate it when I go into a shop and I see knitwear being hung on any hanger really. It just makes me wanna Typically as well, you're spending a lot of money on your outerwear, like most of my expensive items are my outerwear pieces. So I always wanna keep them in the best knit and thick chunky hangers are the way to go. If you've got any heavy outerwear, like super heavy wool overcoats, you can actually double or triple up hangers. And that means that they'll be able to retain their shape and last you longer. Nice little tip there. Let's move on. Anyone who hates work, who hates working in an office. <laughs> Anyone who works in an office or hates dragging out an ironing board every time you need to iron something will love this next one. And it is a hand steamer. Let me put this down because I'm about to get shouty. Tell me right now, in today's modern age, self-driving cars and all this stuff, tell me who has time to bust out the ironing board and iron all their clothes. This isn't 1990 anymore. Enter this amazing little tool. Now, if you're a lover of a press crease trouser, you're a bit out of luck with this. But 99% of everything else that comes with decreasing, this is the way to go. I find myself right before I leave, giving my shirts, particularly linen shirts in summer, a quick little freshen up with this, and it makes the world of difference when you step outside. Quite often as well, I'll chuck it in my suitcase when I'm traveling because I hate phoning a hotel and asking them if they have an iron. I don't know why, I'm just weird like that. Not for everyone, but as mentioned, great if you find yourself in a crease shirt more often than not. Up next, I've got a few things that you might have heard of before, but are imperative to keeping my footwear and my feet in good nick. First up, we have shoe trees. Shoe trees for me, whether you're into smart footwear or sneakers, are a must. Now you can go expensive with those like fancy wooden ones that I see, but those are, those are so expensive, man. They're like 25 quid for one. And you can get a pack of 10 for these for like 10 quid. Much more value for your money with these. These do about 90% of the job of the wooden ones. Yes, I made that figure up. Shoe trees are amazing at reducing creases and allowing your footwear to retain its intended original shape. The wooden ones do completely fill out the shoe all the way through and they also reduce sweat and odor by absorbing some of that moisture. So if you've got stinky feet, might be the right choice for you. Whether the wooden ones are worth the extra money, I'll leave that to you guys. I'll link both in the description down below. Alrighty, alrighty. <laughs> I can't. That actually hurt, ow. Next up on the footwear side of things is a shoe horn. Now these are for all my loafer boys out there. I can see why people shy away from loafers. They're so, so hard to get on when they're new and the leather hasn't stretched out. But this will definitely help you get your foot in there and start wearing them a lot more. Nothing new or groundbreaking here, just a good tool and they're cheap as chips too. Only thing I'd say here is make sure you go for a long, sturdy one, something, oh, long and sturdy. Uh... 
thing here is make sure you go for something sturdy, like a metal one, and that way it will last you a long time. And make sure it's long. Hold on, where's my, where's my other one? Which one would you prefer? This one or this one? I'll tell you which one I would prefer. <laughs> the longer one here I have is about 43 centimeters and it works great. Let's move on. Okay, is the secret sauce to make any footwear, no matter what it is, comfortable? And that is gel insoles, or if you've got no money, you can always go and grab some insoles out of your comfortable sneakers and put these in the less comfortable shoes. I bet everyone sat watching this has an old pair of sneakers that they don't wear anymore. Go and grab the insoles out and just chuck them in your uncomfortable shoes. It will make a world of difference. If you love your leather shoes, but you find yourself putting your feet in a coma every time you wear them, definitely consider this option. Little side note though, it won't always work, particularly if you like your shoes very tight fitting or they're new and you haven't really stretched the leather out yet. Typically now if I'm going to buy any shoe that I think might be in any way uncomfortable I'll buy it a half size bigger than my true size so I can chuck an insole in and just make it more comfortable. Great option if you find yourself on your feet all day. Let's move on. Comboing greatly with insoles in an effort to save your feet are these little things called heel grips. And these will revolutionize your life if you love to wear shoes like derbies or loafers that tear your heels up when they're new. These are silicon patches that you essentially stick on the inside heel of your shoes and these stop your heels from getting destroyed by that tough leather. I back these so much. I essentially never wear loafers or derbies without these now. My loafer setup at the moment for my Solivare ones, I have my Nike running shoe insole in there and then I put these in there as well. These totally change the game. I highly recommend if you find yourself wearing super uncomfortable shoes that tear your ankles up. It makes a world of difference. Okay, the final, and in my opinion, most valuable or essential, whatever you want to call it, item under 25 quid that will help you out is a lint roller. This probably isn't a very big surprise for anyone who's owned pets or likes to wear a lot of black. I fall into both of those categories. Before I shoot anything for this channel, I'll always have like a big lint rolling session. I want these videos to look as professional as possible. I hold myself to a high standard, you know? Regarding real life though, I almost always leave this by the door and then I'll give myself a final check over just before I head out, especially if I've got any sort of smart occasion that I need to be at. It will work on pretty much any fabric, canvas or cotton or wool. Now I can understand if you don't need a steamer or maybe like a shoehorn, maybe you only wear sneakers. This is such a universal tool and I think everyone should consider it if you even care just a teeny tiny bit about your appearance and looking your best when you step outside. All right guys, and that is my very subjective guide on eight essentials that I think could elevate your wardrobe and for under 25 quid. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Also, let me know what tools you would add to this list because as always, I definitely missed some. I'm gonna chuck you over to this video here if you're after some more fall or winter fashion content from your boy. If not, I will see you in the video next week. See you then.